every um, organism on, on the planet, including human beings, evolution has designed us to fit with the environment, right? That's, that's, that's what evolution does. It, it, it tries to make dogs like, like Emma's dog and, and, and me and everyone else and everything else, including flowers and everything else. It's designed every organism to optimally fit with its environment. And normally when we think about the environment, we get an image in our heads about, you know, if, if you've studied psychology, you, you go back to caveman days and you think about saber toothed tigers and threats in the environment, all those sort of things that, that are important. But one thing that is overlooked often when we think about what is the environment that, that species are adapted to on earth, one thing we overlook is the environment is in fact dramatically rhythmic. Three o'clock in the afternoon, think of your environment at the moment at three o'clock in the afternoon, and then think of that environment at three o'clock in the morning. They couldn't be more different. The cycle between light and dark is so dramatic that nature has worked out, and nature worked this out millions of years ago, that the change from light to dark is so important that we can't just react to it, we have to predict it. And we have a predictive, every species, not just me and Emma's dog, but every species has a predictive mechanism built into us. Uh, um, it's a clock. We have a built-in biological clock that ticks away inside us, wakes us up every morning, starts to wake us up from about three o'clock in the morning and you know, on a countdown sort of process and prepares us for darkness that is coming every day. And it prepares us for sleep by releasing melatonin, uh, which, which is, which is a, a sleep inducing hormone. Um, and it performs this function because nature has worked out like for human beings, for example, where, where uh, adapted to function well in daylight, we really need to know when it's going to be dark again, because all of a sudden all our functioning is very, very different once it's dark. And similarly, given that we, we sleep uh, a, as a way of recuperating, nature needs to wake us up. And it's quite complicated waking up a comp uh, uh, an organism like a person. So we have this clock. It's called the circadian system, circa, is Latin for about and dias day. So there's a rhythm that pulses away inside all of us at about 24, it's an approximately 24 hour rhythm. And it keeps going, even if you put people completely out of contact with any time cues, right? So it's not being pulled by light and dark or alarm clocks or anything else. It's actually coming from inside. And in specifically in human beings, the clock sits about mm, eight centimetres in there, um, deep in the base of the brain. Well, what the, some Asian religions call the third eye in about there. Um, and it pulses away and tells us when to wake up and when to be active and when to go to sleep. And so that makes perfect sense, I reckon, right? The idea that this clock is there. But there's one more step before we get to the notion of routines. Why, why would routines matter? A really interesting feature of this clock. And one of the things that I, I personally find most appealing about it, because it's a, it's, a, it's a biological process, it's genetically grounded. The same genes that drive my clock are the genes that get Winston, Emma's dog, to know when it's five o'clock. It's exactly the same mechanism. And it's the same mechanism that's in plants, like the mushrooms that Victoria and Erin were talking about before this call. Every organism has the same clock mechanism and it's a genetic mechanism that's well understood. And so when we talk about genes and biology, we start to think, oh, you mean like hardwired? This is just some part of the brain that's deep there and it just keeps ticking away irrespective of what's going on in the environment. No, it is a genuine clock, but like a clock, you know, an old fashioned clock, I don't know if anyone's got them anymore, where you can, you know, adjust the, the hands on the clock. 
the clock in the brain is the same as that. And it gets adjusted every day because the sun comes up at a different time every day across the seasonal year. So the clock needs to be open to the environment. It gets adjusted or synchronized every day. So it's open. So it's a real clock, but it's open to a daily adjustment. Now, that's what makes routines important because the circadian clock actually responds to how we act. The main thing it's sensitive to is light. So at the moment, I'm sitting about a, a metre away from a window. And at that distance, I'm not actually getting enough light for my clock to notice. But if I move to about 10 centimetres away from that window, my clock notices. And so it, it registers that it has seen daylight at this particular time. So you're starting to guess what I'm about to say here. The clock benefits from receiving reliable timing information. And we do that by behaving in routine or regular ways each day. So it's a really fascinating thing, as I reckon, that the behaviour, how we act on a daily basis, can either support the clock or disrupt it right? So lifestyles where we're going to bed at three o'clock one morning and then 10 o'clock, you know, at night, uh, the next day, very irregular lifestyles, they confuse the clock. And there's one, that, and so I hope you get that. And there's one final bit in the story. This clock is closely linked to parts of the body and the brain and the mind that are about mood. One of the things the clock drives, for example, is daily patterns in energy and mood. And so you think, oh, okay, if that clock's not functioning well, we might start to generate not just problems with the clock, but problems with our mood. And so for about 20 years, one of the most important biological hypotheses of bipolar disorder is that there's a vulnerability in the clock. So I've just told you a story about how this clock is uh, how it works and how it's important in mood. But the final part of the story is that people with bipolar disorder may already have a bit of a vulnerability in that clock. And so the, the importance of supporting the clock is probably, supporting the clock is probably more important for people with bipolar disorder than it is for people without bipolar disorder. Supporting the clock is really important for everybody. So reliable timing information coming into the clock. It com comes in through the eyes, the, the light information. Um, it's important for everybody. That's just part of human biology and health and well-being. But for people with bipolar disorder, we think they may already have a bit of a, a, a less robust clock than people without bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. So that's why routines are particularly important for people with um, bipolar disorder.